pay. Excuse me. Okay. Hey. Yo. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. いらっしゃいませ。ありがとうございました。
っしゃいませ。ございましたいらっしゃいませ。Nobody's here. You sure this is the place? Aw, are you scared? Don't be so wimpy. I thought you were a cop. That was a long time ago. I'm a driving instructor now. Ah, Dachi-san's just allergic to fancy restaurants, that's all. He's a man of basic tastes. It's true. I only ever go to fast food joints. Ugh, that's so gross. Also true. Right on time. But everyone's already inside, waiting for you. Well, we weren't late, so you don't get an apology. And I wasn't expecting one. I just thought I'd let you know. Of course, now you're making them wait further. And who is them, by the way? You'll see. Go in, please. There's no need to worry, Kasuga-san. You have the Jungihan guarantee that no harm will come to you here. Hard to trust the guy who was pointing a gun at me just a few hours ago. Ah. But now we are outside the bounds of the Great Wall of Muscle. That changes things. Come in! That was Song Hui. Here we go. Yo, Kasuga-kun. How you doing? Xiao. And... <sighs> hey, what's up with the old guy? Watch it. That's Ryuhei Hoshino, the Seiryu clan chairman. What? But if he's here, then that would mean they're... Yeah. The Aegean Three. All the leaders gathered in the same spot. Kasuga, think you can tell us what the hell is going on here?
Please, step inside. Hey, aren't these three supposed to be fighting a war? Supposed to be. Kind of a weird place for us to meet, Chairman Hoshino. Especially considering the three of you look more like you're ready to have a tea party than tear each other's throats out. Usually we meet only once a year, unless there is a need to share information face to face, as we must now. We always do what it takes to keep the Great Wall intact. Your men are killing each other out there. You don't want to stop them? Stop them? Two of my youngest men were gunned down without mercy. Leomang Turf's been raided right up to the perimeter of their base. There's no stopping any of it now. At this point, whoever retreats first will have lost the war. I can't lay down my spear until that happens. That's pretty much the same deal for me. So then why are you two here? Gonna decide the war over a game of cards? <laughs> Not the worst idea. What the fuck? People are dying! And meanwhile, you three are just hanging out playing nice? Think your men would approve? Do any of you even care what your own people think? Kasuga, there's no need to throw fits about what you don't understand. Do you know right now Captain Takabe is Xiao's prisoner? <laughs> prisoner? We're treating him more like an uninvited guest. Honestly, I'd let him go if I had one good reason to. I just don't. That's all. So you're going to sit here and do nothing? Just let the chips fall where they may? That's how it needs to be. A bunch more pointless deaths is how it needs to be? They're not pointless. Our men's willingness to fight is the entire reason we're able to serve as checks on each other. As long as the triangle remains balanced, it can hold firm against outside pressure. It's much like how Japan established separation of powers after the end of its dictatorship. It's not perfect, but it's the best solution we have. Do you see the logic there? Oh boy, a post-war history lesson. What? That's what you're comparing it to, right? Yes, because it's relevant. The post-war period is when the town's lines of power were drawn. Huh? The black market was born from the ashes of the war. It laid the foundation for modern-day Jincho. Back then, the Seiryu clan was thriving. But in Chinatown, two rival Chinese gangs were competing for dominance. The winner of that fight prospers in Chinatown to this day. The gang that lost became the Yokohama Liuman. They were driven out of Chinatown and then to Ijincho. But the Seryu clan wasn't about to take that kind of invasion lying down. For a time, the gutters practically ran with Liumang and Seryu blood. Man, you're gonna lecture until the bell rings, Professor? You want to understand what's going on? Then you need the history, you smartass. If you want to understand the fake money, that is. The Seryu clan knows about that? Yes. All the fake money printed by the Komi Jewel goes through me. But doesn't that mean the Seiryu clan is the real puppet master behind all this? How do you figure that? Mabuchi started forging Chinese Yuan, sure. But only because of the counterfeit yen. I think I'm starting to figure all this out. The Liu Mang brings in the paper. The Komi Jewel prints the bills. But then, the Seiryu clan keeps all the profit? Wait. Are you all in this together? Kasuga kun. Calm down, you're jumping to conclusions. Because I'm pissed off right now! First, I'm kidnapped, accused of being a Seiryu Yakuza, then blamed for being the spark that ignites a war, nearly killed over Namba's thing. Now I'm here with the Ejing Three, who, by the way, don't even give a shit about the war! Tell me, why should I calm down? He's got a point. And you, with your damn Seiryu clan, you're the one getting the most out of this! No, because we're not the final destination of the fake Yen. 
That will be Yutaka Ogikubo's pocket. Yutaka Ogikubo? I saw his name in an article. He's some big shot in the Citizens' Liberal Party. And all three of you are working together to support him politically? Why? Huh. Suddenly my history lesson seems relevant, doesn't it? <sighs> Fine. Get on with it. Ogikubo is the man who proposed making fake money in a Jincho. This was 60 years ago. He pitched the idea to the first Seryu chairman and first Liumang boss. A politician suggested committing federal crime to a bunch of gangsters? For real? At the time, Ogikubo was only a member of the city council. But he saw the fights breaking out between the long-established Seryu clan and the newly arrived Liumang. He understood it was, in essence, a turf war. Knowing that, he looked for solutions to stop the bloodshed. Solutions that would save lives. And eventually, he managed to find an answer. Fake money, of all things. Industry. Which in this case is, yes, fake money. Okikubo split the roles up evenly. That way, both organizations would have a common goal. The Liumang would import special paper, the Seryu clan would print and transport the money. How did Ogi Kubo know the counterfeiting process? He didn't at first. But since he had faith in his plan and a desire for peace, he used every single connection he had to collect the raw materials, plus the recipe. Counterfeiting wasn't that difficult back then. Currency didn't have all the security features it has now. It's only gotten harder over the years. But anyway, after the first batch was printed, Ogikubo used it to bribe the cops. The cops? Not the Seiryu clan or the Liumang? There would have been no point in paying off those two. That conflict goes deeper. Ogikubo understood that. Okay, but why give it to the police? They wanted to control them, of course. And in the blink of an eye, they became his loyal servants. That ought to surprise no one given how corruptible law enforcement tends to be. Anyway, Ogikubo had his new minions in uniform crack down on one certain region of Ijincho. Well, that doesn't sound like such a bad thing. Yeah, he was making the city safer, right? Now, that was just a side effect of what he really wanted. To squash every attempt by the Seiryu to drive out the Liuman. All police resources were dedicated to that one goal. It created a tiny pocket of Ijincho that was essentially violence-free. Well, I bet that worked out great for the Leo Mung. Oh, and you're the sharp one, I take it. Yes. That zone became the Liu Mung's home. So there it was. A place controlled by a criminal organization, but with low crime. The first Gray Zone. And the Seiryu clan just accepted that. Hmm? Why would they give up their territory and all its income streams like that? Because they were getting continuous payouts from the counterfeiting operation. And that wasn't the only thing. Anytime one of us did something that normally would have landed us in hot water, Okikubo would contain it. He kept it off police reports. That kept us from losing men to the law. So there were plenty of benefits for us. All while we kept our honor. This Ogi Kubo's a pretty shrewd guy. Nah. He just used some old tricks every politician knows. Oh. Well, perhaps. But do you understand now how we benefit from him? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And my people reap those benefits also. In the 80s, the Komi Jewel was saved by the Ijincho Grey Zone. How? Our parent organization was the Jingon Mafia, which formed decades ago in Korea. Even only a few years ago, he was a body double for their leader. But every time the Jingon Mafia got crushed, some of its people would drift to Ijincho. My mother was one of those. I was young when she brought me here. Ijincho was a breath of fresh air after living so long under their ridiculous code. More and more people heard about the relief we found here. So more came. But then our safety was threatened by something else. As our numbers grew, so did our clashes with the Yokohama Liomong. 
You started fighting them? Not outright. Ogikubo stepped in. Right before a real war erupted, he brought us a proposal that we take over the Seiryu's counterfeiting business. It was an offer of steady income and safe territory. How could we refuse? In return, we would perform the surveillance necessary to contain the secret. That's how we started to build a system that now monitors every inch of Ijincho. It became our way to contribute to the smooth running of Ijincho, alongside the Seiryu and Liomang. So that's the origin story behind the Ijin 3. Ever since, we've all supported Ogikubo. And he supported us in kind. He used the huge streams of money from us to secure his seat at the helm of the Citizens' Liberal Party. Now, no one in the cabinet can speak against him. After masterminding a way to bring peace to the city, he moved up in the world. Well, there are worse ways to climb the ladder, but I can't condone it. It's still a cover-up. <laughs> really? So you would say even perfect results don't matter if the methods are flawed? What about the police themselves? What about their alliance with all the Yakuza which grew from the scorched earth of post-war Japan? Light and dark joined hands to rebuild, and that's how we got where we are today. You can't deny the ends justify the means. Ah, uh, well... What does it even matter what happened? Who cares about that stuff right now? It's all in Eugene Show's past! What we gotta think about is its future. So why'd you call us here? What do you want? <laughs> Your friend Nambakun, during his search for his brother, spied on us and invaded our privacy. I assume he began with the fake bills because that was his brother's subject of investigation. But he was reckless, digging through Komi Jewel affairs like a rabbit raccoon. Right from the start, he's refused to show any respect to the Eugene gene 3 Now he's seen the counterfeiting for himself, and we have no idea where he is. We must ensure his permanent silence. Why are you telling us this? You looking to make a deal for his life or something? A deal? Kasuga, under most circumstances, all your lives would be forfeit. <laughs> but I have some idea of how this fake bill ended up in your pocket. What? Huh? You do? Out of respect for this person, I will look the other way. But who the hell was it? If you really want to know, You'll have to bring Namba to me, personally. We can't do that to Nanchan. Sure is tempting. Kasago, but I'll pass. Nothing I need to know so bad that I'd sell out a friend. So we done here? You do realize, if word gets out about the counterfeiting, the Great Wall will crumble. And that means the end of the Grey Zone. Yeah, that would suck. For you. Look, the Great Wall keeps the peace with less than honorable means, sure. But it provides a safe haven for desperate souls with nowhere left to turn. Yeah, man, I get all that. Well, here's what you don't get, you moron. When we say no one gets in, that includes the Tojo clan and the Omi Alliance. So see, if we're talking about people who owe their lives to the Grey Zone, you're one of them, Kasugaku. Uh, what? After you were shot, the only reason the Omi didn't finish you off is because you were inside the zone. What are you trying to say? That I owe something to the city? Go ahead and act like you're above it all, but you've benefited from our operation as much as any of us. Fine. Still doesn't mean I'm gonna sell out a friend. Before you insist on that, I have something important to say. Yeah, what? We already have assassins hunting Namba. What the hell? Whose assassins? Mine. Somebody had to step up. That's stepping up in your book? Hunting an innocent man? Unlike you, Kasuga. 
I don't turn down attractive offers, but don't worry. I told my guys to make it painless. But, uh, my men have gotten a little rough lately. You son of a bitch! Call him off! No can do. I think one death for the sake of the whole city is worth the price. What do you say to our offer now? If you refuse, Namba will die. But aren't you gonna kill him all the same if we bring him to you? Instead of worrying about that, worry about getting to him first. Your clock's ticking. Hey, we don't even know where to look. I may have an idea. Well, there you go. So, Kasuga, given all this, what will you do? I mean, guess I'm rescuing Namba from your stupid assassins. No. Yo. Hmm? Yes. Hmm? I see. Hey, yeah. Yo. Sup? それでは
ございませんありがとうございましたチリソースロバーオーバーヒア。
Yo, Sachan. Huh? Uh, Sachan? Uh, wait. You're not Sachan? It's nice to see you again, Kasuga-san. We met at Sunlight Castle, isn't that right? Wait. Are you Nanoha-san? But why are you here? Who told you to meet me? <laughs> <laughs> Ichiban! Look closer! It's me, Saiko! Oh, so it is you, Sachan. If you can't see through it, then my performance must be good. I'm sure Katsuragawa will think I'm Nanoha too. Yeah, for sure he will. Even though, <clears throat> actually, I was just pretending to be tricked. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Anyway, I figured out where to find Katsuragawa. Nanoha's gonna pay him a surprise visit and tell him to hit the road. You're still coming with me, right? He's at his office right now. He said it was a consulting firm, but it's actually an illegal loan business. And his bodyguard and his employees, they were all in that shady biker gang he used to be in. Scum collects around other scum. Man, how did Nanoha get caught up with people like that? She might just be the kind of girl who's into it. Or maybe I shouldn't have butted into her life so much. You probably understand by now how bad I feel about all this. Hey, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe she's just the kind of girl who's into bad boys. Either way, let's go fix this for her. Time to take out the trash. Wait, what the fuck? Are you serious right now? I knew something was up with you. Showing up out of the blue like this. What's gotten into you? You realize what you're doing? I sure as hell do. I'm saying I won't give you any more money. Okay, but... And that means you have no reason to be with me, right? So we're breaking up. For good. Oh, come on, babe. Don't be stupid. It's not like I was going out with you just for the money. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Just give me what you owe me. Right here, right now. What? I, I can't right now. I, I gotta throw two million at my company soon, or it'll go belly up. Sweetie, you know how hard I've worked for this. I just need a little more. You could pull in two mil back at the Soapland easy. Hey man, I gotta ask. How much have you already borrowed from Nanoa? Hey man, I gotta ask. How about you fuck right off? If she lent you two million on top of everything else, how much of that total do you plan on paying back someday? You need to crawl back down out of my ass, dude. This ain't none of your business. You don't know, do you? Yeah, you want to borrow even more. You're lucky Nanoha's not a real loan shark. I'm lucky, because Nanoha and I are in love. Money don't matter to us, right, babe? These fucking tightwads. It's 1.3 million yen. That's the amount of money Katsuragawa-san has already borrowed from Nanoa-san. Hey, Yamashita, stay out of this. Nobody asked you. Uh, uh, forgive me. It wasn't my place. Nah, thanks for speaking up, Yamashita. Good man. So, we'll be taking that 1.3 million back today. Who are you anyway? You're a real Yakuza-looking motherfucker. Maybe you're trying to take my girl's money for yourself. That's none of your concern. Give me back my money so I can be on my way. Nanoha, I love you. Come on. Remember what you said? How you always dreamed of what we have? Nanoha really loved you that much? We're perfect for each other. Honey, you're a sweet angel. And I'm the guy who protects you from all the bastards of the world. Ah, oh, so that's the excuse you've been using for dragging her down. He's one of the bastards I'm talking about! Yamashita, what are you waiting for? Toss this guy out on his ass already! No. Haven't you done enough? What? What did you say? Sir, step back and take a look at yourself. You need to let Nanoha-san go. She's been working herself to the bone to support her father. She needs the money. Besides, you've got a bunch of other girls coming around anyway. What the hell are you doing? I'm doing what's right, boss. You can't just keep squeezing the poor girl dry. 
and she shouldn't have to work at no damn Soapland. I can't just sit by and watch this happen to an innocent woman. It, it just ain't right. Yo, why don't you think about who you're talking to? I'm the guy who saved your ass when you were a zit-faced teenager, remember? So unless you want to go back to being everybody's little bitch... <laughs> Every time someone calls you out or wants to leave your ass, you just make threats? Are all your boys with you just out of fear? I bet they all hate your guts. Alright, I'm just fucking sick of you now. All of you, stop standing around with your dicks in your hands and throw this guy out! Yamashita too, you goddamn traitor! <laughs> Can't see I didn't see this coming. Well, except for Yamashita-kun acting like a real man. That was a nice surprise. No kidding. You know, I've been looking for an excuse to cut ties with him. Maybe it's even simpler than that. Maybe you just like Nanawa. Yeah, maybe that's it. Wait, you do, don't you? <laughs> well, that's great, Yamashita-kun. Kinda cute, honestly. Yeah, yeah, you'll both be real cute after I crush you into little pieces. Stop hitting me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, where's all that fighting spirit, Katsuragawa? <laughs> Don't tell me you've had enough. <sighs> Give back all the money you borrowed from Nanoha right now, then get the hell out of Yijincho. If I see you around town again, I'll kick your ass even harder. If you reach out to Nanoha, you won't have an ass when I'm done. Okay. Okay, I got it. Please, just let me go. <laughs> All right. I won't hit you again. I won't. Huh? You asshole. Don't you ever take advantage of a woman ever again! Go! Wait, are you for real? This is Nanoha's sister? She has a twin? Damn. Sorry to disappoint you, Yamashita-kun. I know you probably worked up all that courage to look cool for Nanoha. Sorry, Yamashita-kun. No, that's all right. I mean, running him off still makes life better for Nanoha-san. That's what matters. So, you're gonna keep acting like you never knew she worked at the soap land? Yes. And this whole Katsuragawa incident never happened, okay? I am dead serious about this. Okay. But she's definitely going to notice that her boyfriend suddenly skipped town without saying goodbye. And it happened right after she got a phone call from her estranged sister telling her to break up with the guy. What are you saying? You don't think she'll figure out her sis had something to do with his disappearance? <laughs> I mean, it'll almost be too obvious that Psycho said something to make him leave. Whoa. Now that you say that, yeah. That's fine, honestly. Can't really do much about it now, can I? 
But what if Nanoha gets pissed at you again? I thought you wanted to have a good relationship with her. Her happiness is my top priority. How she feels about me is secondary to that. It still kind of sucks if she ends up hating you after you did so much for her. She would have ended up broke if she stayed with that douchebag. You deserve some credit. I'm just grateful I can still talk to her on the phone. All I want is for her to be happy. Still... Huh. I could always tell Nanoha-san it went down like this. Like what? I'll tell her Katsuragawa's firm took a nosedive and he bailed to escape all his debts, but I got him to leave enough to pay her back. That way, she can get her money without knowing you two were involved. Nice plan. I like how it conveniently gives you all the credit, Yamashita-kun. Oh, you're right. Guess that's no good, is it? I don't want to take all the credit. After all, I only said what was true. It killed me to see you're caught up in Katsuragawa's game for so long. I kept telling myself that I would stand up for her if she ever needed it. But then I'd make excuses, telling myself it wasn't the right time. When I saw her, well, when I saw someone I thought was her, demanding what she was owed, I knew the time had come. Sachan, you hearing this? What do you think? Hey, Yamashita-kun. Yeah? Let's say you're at a restaurant or a store. How exactly would you treat the staff? I... I just try to be as polite as possible. Even though people don't expect it because of how I look, it's still the right thing to do. Okay. Well... You pass for now. <laughs> Setting the bar for being your sister's squeeze kind of low, aren't you? I said for now, didn't I? Huh? Don't worry. I'm still gonna watch over Nanoha from my big sister perch somewhere. So if Yamashita-kun turns out to be a total creep, then I'll just have to step in. Whatever it takes to make her happy. I get that. I'd want the same. <laughs> You're a good sister, Sachan. I'm sure Nanoha will eventually realize that. Hopefully sooner than later. Thanks so much, Ichiban. That's twice now you've helped me save my sister. I really am grateful, you know. I'm glad you're in my life. Yo, Adachi-san. Hey, Kasaga. Thanks for being there during the settlement the other day. Not a problem. Think of the story we can tell now. You playing a rich guy and me playing your secretary. I thought it suited us perfectly, to tell the truth. Now how about I buy you a meal? Hmm? Beef bowl sound good? Hell yeah! Let's go to Akuhushimaru! What should I get? The new special looks good, but there's also the old standby. Come on, when someone's treating you, you gotta go with just a standard beef bowl. Aw, oh, man, really? Well, at least let me get a large. Huh? Adachi-san, isn't that... Takashi? Hey, Taka- Pipe down, dumbass! If he sees me like this, he's gonna know I'm not rich. Right. Didn't think about that. Not to mention, a rich philanthropist and his secretary eating at a dingy little beef bowl joint looks pretty weird. Let's get out of here before Takashi sees us. What about the beef bowl? Next time. Hey. That's the con man. How's it going? Okay. Even though it was a bust, I still think that guy Yamada is a total sucker. We gotta try again. Okay, come on. Just keep the pen pal thing with him going for now, okay? Uh, okay. Come on. We'll come up with a better plan. 
One that'll make us really rich. You think the two of them could be working together? Hey! What's going on here, Takashi? Y yamada san What are you guys doing here? Oh, we're getting beef bowls, because we're broke. Now tell us what you're doing here. You're broke? Yeah, that's right. Mr. Yamada Moneybags was fake. I made it all up. I'm just a jobless old fart named Adachi. Huh? Surprise. Adachi-san was just pretending to be a high roller, so Takashi wouldn't feel bad taking his money. And this is your way of showing thanks? By taking everything I've got? Takashi, if I were you, I'd start apologizing. Adachi-san's not the only one getting pissed off right now. We're the ones who need an apology. You've been lying about all this money of yours, and now it turns out you're just some bum. You stay out of this. No, I'm gonna fuck you up now. Messing with us and stirring up a bunch of shit? You got it coming, man! Screw this. Time for me to kick your ass. Let's go out front. Come on! Yeah! So sorry. Do you have any idea what it's been like to be me these past 20 years? Hey, Kosuke. Takashi-kun? I just found this letter in my room. What's this about scraping a bumper and an out-of-court settlement? I don't remember anything about this. Crap. I can explain. Dude, did you pretend to be me to squeeze some money out of Yamada-san? I'm really, really sorry, man. Hang on a sec, you two. Let's get this cleared up. Yeah, seriously. This letter is the one I sent to Takashi, to set a date for the settlement. And you sent it to Takashi Kasumi, that's me. Are you serious right now? Then who's this? He's my roommate, Kosuke. There was a time when we were both good students striving to become lawyers. But then Kosuke gave up on having a real career and started hanging out with some losers. My guess is they pressured him into impersonating me. He's not the type to stand up to people. <laughs> guess he would've made a crap lawyer. Look, all I did was mention that my roommate had some sweet-ass deal where rich guy sends him money every month. Hasegawa-san's the one who came up with the scam idea. I'm really sorry. I'd like to apologize as well, Yamada-san. Although, I guess I should just call you Detective Adachi. What? How did you know who I was? I've known for a while. Nobody else would have cared about me enough to support me all this time. But you... You fought for my father's innocence until the very end. You know about that? Yes. Even back then, I knew about it. Well... Then let me say now what I should have said then. I'm sorry I didn't save your dad, Takashi. Please, don't apologize. You've already helped me make sure that nobody else will suffer like my father did. Because... I passed the bar exam. You what? Really? You kicked that exam's ass? I did. They announced the results yesterday. Hot damn! That's great, Takashi! Really, really great! I owe it all to you. 
All your help over the years really made a difference. Well, if you ask me, it was worth every yen. But I don't want to keep leaning on you, so I ask that you let your most recent gift be the last. Sure. You don't gotta ask me twice. <laughs> Even though, you know, this time next month I might be a little sad not to help you. Oh, then just keep sending it. After all, I could argue that you legally obligated yourself to keep doing it once you started. What? <laughs> it's just kidding. That's not real. And I should know. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Looks like Takashi couldn't pull the fast one on you, Adachi san. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just for a second there. Nice to see a kid achieve something so big. I mean, that's some real leveling up, becoming a lawyer. Yeah, God, Takashi must have worked his ass off. Ah, oh, he's a good kid, all right. Adachi-san, I think your kindness is what taught him to be good. Ah, oh, I don't know. Even without my money, I'm sure he would have made his dreams come true one way or another. That's just the kind of guy he is. You know, he'll be a great lawyer. <laughs> he'll help a lot of people. <laughs> I think you're right about that. Thanks for everything, Kasuga. Come on, don't get all sentimental on me. I mean, it's just that, you know, we've gone through some, some shit together, you know, but in the end, it's, you know, good times. I'm glad we met each other. I really am. What a coincidence. I was just thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> nice that the feeling's mutual. How about we celebrate Takashi passing the test with a drink. Yeah, to great future lawyers and great former detectives. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs>